hello uh, i'm gonna make this video really fast just because i have to actually make it uh it's only gonna be an hour long i mean i'm sure you already know but still this on this account only does it for like an hour it doesn't really do it for that much of a time but uh grace and peace be multiplied to you uh, especially peace as individuals just have had their peace taken away just because their actual legal grounds they fell into sin or other things like that uh and so obviously uh, you're frantic, you're anxious, you're having panic attacks, you're not as ground in things that you're uh, usually ground in without any problems or things like that uh, any longer because of uh, this uh, legal ground and judgment. So obviously your peace was taken away, so uh, I just cast it out, cast whatever is causing this um, this way of thinking to even come inside of your uh, thoughts because you begin overthinking when you don't actually have peace. You begin to feel overwhelmed. You don't actually have peace and you just obviously have anxiety uh, and panic attacks and other things like that. Uh, if you could just think of a time before this was actually happening to you, obviously that in itself is going to expose it 100% that, um, well, that obviously this you're not in that way of thinking anymore and because you're not actually in that way of thinking obviously something happened you fell into sin and the judgment obviously fell down so uh that's that judgment but i just wanted individuals to actually focus on that aspect as well just because um everybody's going through it i already know some individuals don't have the same peace as they used to have when they were children or uh just when they were teenagers or other things like that so these things in themselves are obviously pretty easy to recognize and to see that your peace was taken away so just repent renounce these sins live a holy life and yeah that's essentially it um so this video is just actually going to be about um just the first things first, which is uh, not suffering a wish to live. Uh, this one is just pretty self-explanatory, uh, but it's it's a lot more uh, serious in individuals, I think, just because um, the devil himself obviously is employing the work of human hands who are more than willing to carry out his plans for whatever reason that they, they feel justified in that, uh, that is, is fine, and, and, but whatever actually caused them to actually want to become a witch or a Satanist or whatever. Uh, these individuals are completely heartless. Uh, they're not this, they're not humans anymore. They're in it strictly for destroying children uh, and doing wicked abominations uh, like that. So at face value, obviously, if they're uh, networking in the second heaven and they're trying to get little kids to obviously be molested and other things like that, uh, obviously, these individuals are not human anymore. They're not really, they don't really have hearts any longer. They already have, uh, it's just completely, uh, these individuals are just um, a cancer to society. They're like dead weights. They're parasites. Uh, these individuals are living off the, the goodness of this earth for no real good reason as obviously they're doing something that uh, is just completely evil. Uh, there's no reason for them to touch little kids who are completely innocent. They've been on this earth for like five years and other things like that. But uh, obviously these, these individuals don't think in the same manner as you think or other things like that. So obviously just break the legal grounds that is even causing the satanic church to obviously... Uh, be a judgment for everyone on the face of this earth just because uh this is a judgment there's grounds for these individuals to actually be able to have a church and other things like this so just off of that uh principle alone obviously you take away the judge well you take away the legal grounds and god is forced to take away the judgment uh, just like how when you take the legal grounds uh, because you've already broken up the ancestral curses and the generational curses that it were causing you to be homeless, uh, that were causing you to move from house to house and that were, and the sins of the fathers and the iniquities of the fathers that are causing you to just uh, not be able to find a job or to have a job. Obviously, God is forced to uh, remove that judgment and after he removes that judgment, obviously, you're not homeless anymore. You have a job and anything else that was obviously... Uh, causing this, uh, so this is the same exact principle, it works in the same exact manner, you remove these judgments, you cast these things out of your body and your vessel from everywhere, and all of them out there are working together, and then uh, you bind them and then you lose the graces to obviously be preserved, 
from this uh, way of thinking, but this is more on the outside. So your body obviously is being networked as well in the same manner as how the earth is obviously being networked as well. So uh, it's, it's no different whatsoever. I know individuals think that it is, it is different as networking or, or something just because it's on the outside. But if, the, if you look at the earth as a body, uh, it, and and you see it and you view it in that manner obviously you just cast these things out and you cast them into the abyss and you lose enough legions to get the job done in the same manner how individuals have chief princes inside of their vessel and other things like that obviously this works in the same exact manner you obviously deliver the earth itself from this uh, from these parasites uh, who, are, who are obviously just in it for evil you there's no reason for it, you to ever be hindered there's no reason for these individuals to ever stop you for you, you not to get your deliverance instantly uh just because you have more than enough angels for you to actually be able to ensure that nobody in the body of christ ever gets hindered and other things like that but uh obviously you're going to have to stop taking their word for it and obviously start taking christ's word and start asking christ himself to see if it's actually true uh that you have more than enough angels and legions to ensure that uh, that none of them ever withstand you or, or none of your angels are withstood by princes or things like that uh, as you should be judging these situations accordingly by obviously sending these uh, legions that frustrate these princes and, and these angels and these fallen angels uh, that are on the face of this earth that were actually uh, uh, resisting God just because he obviously had the grounds to be able to resist God and other things like that uh if there's absolutely no legal grounds whatsoever for any of these uh judgments to be on the face of this earth and these judgments are going to be non-existent this should be pretty simple and, and just obviously already be, be embedded inside of your head for you to be able to recognize uh and to see that obviously uh, you don't have cancer for a specific reason you don't have other things you're not going bald because of you're you're not cursed or or just things like that or you uh whatever you deliver yourselves uh to ensure that you don't get uh you don't go bald or just things like that obviously these things in themselves are just pretty easy to recognize uh if you have no grounds for these devils to come inside of your life uh, then everything should be fine. You shouldn't really have to worry about a single thing. So uh, these things just bind and loose these things in the same manner how you obviously deliver yourselves from your body, deliver the earth uh, from uh, these obvious uh, evil entities in the same manner. How obviously, It's just all the same thing either way. You're delivering yourselves from princes that are inside of your body and inside of your vessel. And because you're delivering yourselves from it should automatically be equated inside of your head for you to actually be able to recognize and see, all right, if it works in, in this manner and the networking in my life through the truth princes in my life, obviously I could apply that same principle to what is actually happening and going on uh, in the world. But people don't see it like that. So uh, I was just uh, saying it and repeating it in that manner. Uh, as people typically get in this way of thinking that they obviously have to let witches live uh, because Christ himself has commanded us not to uh, not to kill, but uh, I'm just going to bring up two scriptures in themselves. It says, In the case of witchcraft, I am going to bring up two commandments. Thou shalt not uh, suffer a witch to live, which is Exodus 22.18, and thou shalt not kill, which is Exodus 20.13. Uh, these scriptures are clear and in general. So obviously, when thou shalt not suffer a witch, you shall not, you sh well, you should not suffer a witch to live. And you're not going to do that. So that is and thou shalt not kill so obviously we've already been uh, pretty accustomed to hearing these messages that witches are obviously networking in the second heaven and doing an evil that um uh, they like to suppress and they like to keep hidden and in the dark because then obviously it, it it blunts the force of your prayers to be able to stop them and obviously you don't really you're blinded uh by their actual evils that they're uh committing on the face of this earth so uh, but when a witch is doing witchcraft on you or your loved one, you do not have to, you do not have, and you should not suffer a witch to live until they repent, but it is automatic death. Uh, that in itself is just pretty easy and self-explanatory that uh, it, it says that you shall not suffer, so you're not supposed to uh, let them live if they are witches or if they do uh, practice witchcraft. 
which is which is know that and they try to put legal grounds in you to stop you from receiving that judgment so they they don't want to receive that judgment uh, obviously it's a war so in the same manner how individuals try to stay alive in a war and they try to be sneaky and fight dirty and all types of things uh like that this is obviously is no different whatsoever they're trying to put legal grounds inside of you to ensure that you're not actually able to kill you god doesn't hear your prayers and god resists you uh and other things like that so obviously this is leviathan in itself so it seems contradictory, but uh, one is not ignorant and the other is innocent. The first, the witch is clearly someone intentionally doing evil to you. So it's obviously it, it's war on your end because you're killing them and they're trying to kill you. And they're trying to because they started trying to kill you first. But obviously you're, you're going to kill them because light excels darkness. The other has to deal with your neighbors. So clearly you should be, in, you would be in the wrong for killing your neighbor in a dispute. So it's just like an argument, like he didn't give you your clippers or something like that. Uh, and thou shalt not kill your neighbor because, or thou shalt not kill in general because of what is actually going on. You just, he doesn't want to give you your clippers, just buy some new ones or things like that. And the other is not, they are trying to kill you. So thou shalt not kill is applicable to witches trying to kill you, which is their sin. They're trying to kill you. So if they really want to get technical, they want to bring up laws and they want to be lawyers and other things like that, uh, they're trying to kill you already by trying to just practice your witchcraft and other things like that uh, inside of your life. So well, obviously they're completely in the wrong. They want to say that you're not allowed to kill them, but they're trying to kill you. So uh, they're trying to kill you, so it's not really applicable to them whatsoever that thou shalt not kill because they're already trying to kill you. Uh, so just obviously lose those graces inside of your vessel. And they're trying not to be killed by you so they can continue progressing and actually killing you. So it's just completely stupid. It's a double standard, but they don't care because it's all deceptive. As they are heartless uh, and they rejoice when children go missing and get molested as well as when they can make Leo grounds for cancer and in general. So do not spare any of them because we're already commanded not to spare a single one. Break all legal grounds worldwide and the grounds for them even being able to use their free will to do witchcraft in the spirit spirit of witchcraft itself being enthroned uh now obviously the judgments are forced to be removed once you have already caused the grounds that are causing these judgments to actually uh hit mankind and everyone on the face of this earth just because the god is obviously there's no reason for these judgments to be on the face of this earth if there's no more grounds and no more legality so you just cast these uh, demons out and into the abyss and bind them with everlasting chains reserved for judgment uh, in the same manner how you cast these things out of your vessel because it's your legal grounds and it's your authority uh this is obviously no different so uh, just continue doing that and break the grounds that has caused them to be able to do witchcraft on you and cast them out uh bind and, and loose now obviously the, these um these witches in themselves they do interact uh with angels uh, and because they actually interact with angels uh, I mean, obviously, you don't interact with angels. Uh, this is something you should not forget. That just because angels don't interact with you does not mean that they don't interact with witches in the same manner how we interact uh, when we're going out shopping or we go buy groceries in the same manner how we interact with one another. These angels are just as real to them as another human being on the face of this earth. So obviously, they don't like that whatsoever because uh, they don't want to confront these angels. They don't want to uh, obviously get into confrontations with these angels because they're obviously going to die because of these just principles themselves. So it is all real to them. They already know that it is real themselves. The only thing is that they're trying to convince you that it isn't real so they can continue uh, prospering in their wickedness and other things like that and acting wickedly and in that same manner. So the, even if you start meeting resistance, obviously they shouldn't be doing that whatsoever. So these things are just pretty easy and self-explanatory for you to be able to recognize and to see. But uh, the judgments are forced to be removed, but you have to pray until the work is done. The work could be done today. The work could be done in two weeks from now, other things like that. So these are some things, some things that you should obviously be already hearkening to, and some things that you should be already making habits towards. As I'm sure many individuals have been making habits of breaking all the curses in the morning and praying ahead of time to ensure that they're not obviously able to um, uh, direct your footsteps because you've already broken the grounds that will cause these individuals to obviously be able to control you and manipulate your flesh. 
So I know individuals do this in the morning. They've already made a habit of it. Uh, and just this is, should be no different whatsoever. You should be making a habit of breaking all the grounds uh, that is causing the spirit of witchcraft uh, to be enthroned as, this, as the witchcraft spirit is an unclean spirit. In the same manner how Leviathan is enthroned and it's the spirit of pride or the spirit of Leviathan obviously is the spirit of witchcraft. And you just break the, the judgment itself that is cut, well, the grounds itself that is causing this judgment to obviously be uh Obviously, if there's grounds for this thing to be on the throne, nothing is going to change whatsoever. If there's grounds for God to resist you, nothing is going to change. If there's grounds for um, uh, for you to go missing or your children to get molested, obviously nothing is going to change because this is just what the devils themselves obviously work towards. It's their whole ambition. It's their whole life. Uh, and they just are like, oh, whatever, it's on you. You fell into sin. And because you fell into sin, you obviously know right from wrong. And because you know right from wrong, uh, it's all entirely on you. This is true, but um, obviously you don't really, you can't really do much about it if you're not a Christian, or and you don't actually use your grounds to be able to uh, uh, to break these grounds up and to cast these devils out. As you should be breaking the grounds, causing them to be able to do witchcraft on you. There was just a period in time where they weren't doing witchcraft. And this in itself should be automatically just self-explanatory. These things are so simple. If you have, and whatever, but uh, you just cast them out and then start binding and loosing. And just apply the same deliverance principles uh, in the same manner as how you would apply them uh, to the earth in your body so nudge the body of christ intercede strategically for the body of christ and ensure that everybody's obviously um in uh destroying this uh enthroned evil and ensuring that obviously they're all bound up and cast out and and, and into the, and ensuring that none of uh the individuals who are in the body of christ can uh can have witchcraft done on them uh, Leo grounds are the reason why you don't have cancer, but the devil is evil enough to try to be working into making Leo grounds to give you a, a terminal illness or cancer. So you are going to uh, to try this out right now. Just break the grounds, uh, cast them out, and think ahead. If you broke the grounds and you did cast them all out, this exposes the fact that obviously he had already begun the work to try to give you cancer or leukemia or something worse. Uh, so pray until the work is done. Obviously, the devil is just uh, clearly a, an evil little uh, bastard. And obviously, you don't really have cancer right now. But the fact that he was already directing uh, your steps and directing how you... Uh, to ensure that you obviously do get cancer or some terminal illness or leukemia or something along those lines uh obviously at face value um it completely caught you off guard and you realistically did not know that this was actually happening uh, uh, to you and you just were naive about it you didn't think that these situations could ever happen to you uh and so it this is only that aspect that is anything that is possible in another human. So I know individuals have seen uh, countless stories. Individuals is getting their limbs hacked off, uh, getting murdered, uh, getting measles, uh, getting lupus, getting uh, leprosy and other things like that. Uh, just horrible stuff. Uh, it is already being worked on in you. Anything that is possible that can happen uh, to humans themselves is already being worked on you. This is just the aspect of health in itself. This is really isn't the aspect of uh, like eczema or this. This is really this is or like this isn't really the the. Um, of you actually getting older, looking more decrepit, uh, and not really maturing. Uh, and, and instead of obviously looking aged, getting wrinkly, getting crow's feet and other things like that, as the devil's already doing uh, that work in itself to make you look aged uh, and to ensure that you're not adding grace uh, to graces in itself. So uh, there's still many more places that the devil is working in your life to distort and morph your image away from the image of Christ to make you look old and decrepit. And just like the demons themselves that are obviously controlling your whole life and your whole network, it's a strong man of your vessel and in short they do this work to uh, try to make you look like the demon uh itself and the more you obviously practice in this iniquity and in this work the more you're actually going to begin looking like the demon itself that is your strong man that is actually whispering these ears inside of your life and it's just ruining your life you think that is you and you think that um 
that this is just your life that's your iniquity uh and that it's all it's all right it's not wrong everything is fine and just because of that obviously you continue uh working this work of iniquity and you're getting paid for it and you look like the demon itself that is obviously causing uh the the judgment and self inside of your life that is causing you to just break these curses up this curse uh you cannot break you cannot cast these things out until you finally break these uh curses and grounds up so some of these things you you could just cast them out but uh, it's better to be safe than sorry i don't want you just being like why is this still happening to me and other things like that and it's because this devil itself is resisting your authority and it doesn't obviously want to leave that and you're not obviously casting all these demons out uh for you to actually uh, be completely delivered and whole from these things themselves as some of you individuals think it's just innocently three or four and like oh man i'm such a sinner and things like that uh but you honestly have to re uh look at these things uh with honest eyes and more than likely it's probably like a hundred and twenty thousand uh inside of your vessel and especially even more if you've never even been delivered if you've never even delivered yourselves from uh, from other things like that christ is not going to do everything for you he gives you graces uh because because obviously he knows that you don't know and other things like that but if you still have these actual entities and these beings themselves inside of your vessel uh this is going to make your walk a lot harder than it should and you should just be delivering yourselves uh from these things uh themselves so uh they obviously are trying to make you look old and decrepit instead of maturing spiritually and gracious. Uh, these two are completely different to age and to mature. One is a rebuke, so you look aged, old, and, and wrinkly, and obviously other things like that for your sins and your iniquities yourselves that you practice, either whether it's you believing in the lie of the, of the world and the secular lie or what other something else things. You don't have to just shoot first and ask questions later. He's already doing that work in itself. And... and uh, and the other is grace because you are relying and growing in Christ. So you're relying on Christ, you're relying on grace itself, and you're growing in Christ and you're adding grace to grace. So obviously this is more or less a glory in the eyes of man. People already understand that, that if you're in good health by the time you're like 80, 60, 70, or whatever age, obviously this is uh, typically more uh, praiseworthy in the eyes of men. So these individuals obviously had, uh, they grow in Christ. They had uh, they had grace to grace and, and and virtues and other things like that. They keep a quiet minds. Uh, they're not really hectic, chaotic, or other things like that. And they have uh, virtues uh, that they obviously get paid for it, and they put these things to practice. So. Although the case of Job was unique, it's important to know that the devil could not attack him because he had a hedge of protection around him. The devil had to ask to be able to touch him. So when you fall into sin, uh, this is what brings the legality, which is white discipline and holiness and sanctification away from the world. It's so important since you are not given the devil a foothold whatsoever or a leverage just because you're not actually falling into sin. And this is just uh, obviously what happens to everyone on the face of this earth. When you obviously fall into sin, you fall into sin and this is what actually gives uh, the devil legality to come inside of your life. For every sin that you fall into, there's already a demon attributed to it. So by default, everybody should be able to recognize and to see. For every negative thought that you obviously say to another individual or think about another individual, obviously there's a, a, there's a demon attributed to the actual uh, negative thought that you have said about somebody and, and said this about that. So these things obviously do require you to discipline yourselves to discipline your mind to really um uh not to give the devil a foothold whatsoever or to think anything contrary to what the, uh, the truth obviously is but uh people just uh, are really ignorant about that they're also ignorant of the fact that god is listening to their thoughts 24 7 and this isn't sure why individuals have judgments on them uh and first obviously the judgment in itself that uh, you don't really recognize that God is listening to your thoughts 24-7 because you don't recognize that you're getting rebuked uh, by it until you do. As somebody who has discernment of spirits, they're able to recognize that you have that spirit on you and other things like that. And so because you um, you fail to recognize that God is listening to your thoughts 24-7, you give yourself a lot more leniency than you should. And you say all types of things to another individual. You curse in your mind. You complain. You murmur. You say all these things. But every single thing that you obviously are thinking inside of your head is being written down uh, in God's book 
uh, itself. And so, uh, obviously, this is why individuals end up going into judgment. They go into the great white throne judgment. And God brings up every single thing that you've thought of, every single thing that, uh, any, any negative thought, any bit of tone of, of indifference or, or just complaining and other things like that. Every, every one of these things themselves gets brought up to, to gets brought up for you at the great white throne judgment so obviously it is absolutely vital and important that you recognize that that way you could just discipline yourselves to ensure that you obviously are um not thinking uh not thinking too much and not thinking uh, overly uh you know what you should be thinking as individuals typically are already uh proud in themselves they they value their opinions more than they value the opinions of others and and other things like that so they view themselves very highly they're highly esteemed in themselves and just based off these principles alone uh obviously this is what brings a lot of judgments and legalities are completely unnecessary just because these individuals see these things as, as something that my opinion matters the most and your opinion doesn't really matter i don't really care what you have to say and other things like that because i i attain to this truth i have a higher truth than you uh i'm not as bad as you and just other things like that and every single one of these thoughts themselves they get judged for every single one of these things and and so obviously they're they don't really di they should discipline themselves a lot more they should discipline their thoughts their minds and they shouldn't be lenient with themselves to think whatever they can about anyone else and obviously this the same principle in itself that if you don't have anything nice to say don't say anything at all but all uh, that in itself is just meant to, for you to actually be able to expand it to just uh not think anything about any anything or any situation or any circumstance or any issue in itself that you obviously come across us uh just because uh you shouldn't have an opinion about anything everything is all god's will in itself you don't know everything and just based off that principle alone you really shouldn't open your mouth whatsoever at any point in your life for you to actually be able to know for certain why these judgments uh why these uh stressful situations happen inside of your life and, and special circumstances happen inside of your life uh you, you don't know the exact purpose or the reason and then you just get up you get mad uh you get flared up you start complaining or murmuring when you don't really know when you really haven't stepped back and, and you haven't stepped back and saw uh, the bigger picture uh, and just because of that obviously um this is just one of the things that individuals uh fall into they get judged for these things uh they don't really view these things uh, rationally and just logically that obviously your life is not the most important life on the face of this earth and you view your life a lot higher than another individual's his life was, has gone through way more things than you have gone through other uh, things like that and you just esteem yourselves a lot higher than what uh you obviously should and still even individuals take this in the wrong way just because they don't like uh whatever and they don't they don't like being corrected uh they don't like admitting the fact that they're stupid for uh trying to put their lives ahead of another individual that's life who obviously is suffering through more going through more and has been through uh more than they have ever been through in their entire life they just want to be all about them and, and just highly esteem them and things like that but you don't let people control or manipulate you but let it be a demon and you begin to put it in a legalistic box and give them the luxury to just because uh so strong and opinionated when it comes to humans but you are a lot more gullible than you think when you should apply this first time principle to the spiritual you know and it's just it's just funny in itself how individuals just get uh when another a person just comes inside of their life they're like, i'm not gonna let you manipulate me i'm not gonna let you control me but this is exactly what the demons themselves have been doing to you your entire life and you're just like oh no nah, this is it's not possible or, or whatever individuals say they try to uh uh, to cover up the fact that they're embarrassed and they're ashamed of how stupid they are and other things like that. And they're just like, oh, well, or dumb or, or, or gullible or foolish or whatever other word you want to put uh, in place of stupid as individuals don't really want to admit that they're not as intelligent as they would like to think even by them you calling them stupid automatically individuals just get mad they're just like how could you call me stupid i'm not stupid but realistically uh, obviously these individuals are a lot more gullible uh and, and they let these demons do whatever they walk all over they let them walk all over them man. and just uh they basically give them the key to their life and they just say just do this to me control me manipulate me oh but let it be bob let it be steve or let it be angel uh nah definitely not you're not gonna do anything to me buddy and other things like this so obviously there's 
pride in their in their lives. They they view themselves higher than these uh, three uh, people uh, and other things like that, just because uh, uh, something else in itself. So. Uh, you are going to have to view this list accordingly of uh, well, accordingly of where they can control or manipulate you. And for some of you, this list will be extremely long. And so you're going to have to just judge the situation uh, according to what it actually is. And just be like, man, I have to view this rationally. I can't justify myself whatsoever in this situation at all just because... Um, obviously, this list itself is going to be a lot longer than I think. So stop letting people stop you from wanting to be saved from the lake of fire because of the church here, or just letting them influence your own decisions for your life. Do not be so naive and foolish since it is your life. And that's just what happens. Individuals is just let another person just get inside of the head and be like, you really want to be saved? You really want to be a Christian? It's like, oh, man, they think they're better than everybody else and other things like that. But obviously, you have to really think for yourself and you really have to uh, decide for yourself that I want to be saved. I don't want to die. I don't want to go into the lake of fire. And I really don't care what you have to say. So if you can avoid these situations, why don't you? Uh, and this obviously includes um, the legal grounds for cancer, the legal grounds for witchcraft, for hexes, voodoo, and everything else. Uh, that has to deal with the kingdom of darkness. So why don't you? Obviously, the real reasons why you don't is because you just don't really pray as much as you should. You don't really think ahead. You're not really being prudent and other things like that. And you're more or less just flat out lazy. And you don't actually pray about these things as well as you're just uh, ignorant uh, about these things actually being possible to actually happen to you. That you could get into a car accident. You could turn into a vegetable. And other things like that that the devil's already putting inside of your life to be able to turn you into a vegetable because he puts he directs other individuals his footsteps uh, to actually be able to um, uh, to actually get his work done. He doesn't use you to get his work done as he already knows that he can't use you anymore in that uh, area. Uh, but he's definitely able to use another individual to ensure that you actually do get into a car accident uh, because this individual is a lot more uh, reckless and chaotic than you are. Uh, they drink they drink and drive and other things like that. So uh, these things in themselves are, are obviously 100% necessary for you to be able to recognize and to see that I seriously need to apply this to my life. I, I need to recognize that the devil is already working these works inside of my life to get me in a hospital for whatever reason to give me coronavirus and to send this individual who has a corona uh, inside of my life. And next thing you know, I die from the coronavirus and other things like that. This is what the devil obviously is doing. He's networking it himself. He knows who has coronavirus and who doesn't have coronavirus because it's a demon. There's no coronavirus in heaven. Obviously, that face value should automatically be self-explanatory for you to be able to recognize and to see that because uh, it's an illness in itself is demonic. So you just cast this thing out. Uh, and uh, the principality that is enthroned of coronavirus to obviously get him enthroned to remove that judgment off the face of this earth. So, um, pray, so just pray right now about these types of things. Just break these curses up and these grounds up that would have caused you uh, and another individual to come across your path. He's directing their steps and controlling them exactly like a puppet uh, to come inside of your life. And this individual just thinks that they're their own. They go in uh, about their, they go on about their day eating, making breakfast, and then they go off and they see you. And next thing you know, you have coronavirus. So, uh, or next thing you know, you get run over. Or next thing you know, you get into a car accident. Or next thing you know, you get shot up. Or, or just things like that, that. Anything that is possible that has happened on the face of this earth. Uh, it can obviously happen to you, like getting hacked to pieces with a machete, getting kidnapped by the cartel and other things like that. All of these things themselves, he's already doing this work. He's been working this work inside of your life for a while. Uh, but obviously, if there was no grounds for him to be able to, this is exactly why it hasn't happened yet. And until finally he has these grounds to, obviously, he is going to kill you. Uh, the cross and forgiveness means that you are 100% forgiven, so there is no debt to be paid. So this implies that you can be 100% delivered and healed. But it will be on your own rejection of being whole than the fact that you actually can be healed. So 
Uh, obviously, I've already, everybody has already in that inside of their head that for every sin, there's a demon attributed to it. I mentioned it in the same video. And because there's a sin attributed uh, to every demon and there's a demon attributed to every sin, if you've already been forgiven for all of your sins, there's no reason for any of these judgments and ailments and suffrages that are caused specifically by demons just because it's contrary to your heavenly image uh, should ever be on you. And the only real reason why uh, you don't actually... You aren't actually 100% uh, delivered from it. It's just because you obviously reject it. And it's your own rejection of being a whole. Then the actual fact that you can be so. Individuals have already accepted this as fact, but still they reject it. Uh, they limit the spirit itself from not actually being able to heal you 100%. And other things like that. And they justify the demons themselves. And they justify, well, it's not my time. Or other things like that when... Uh, these things are obviously more on you, it's on your active role. Obviously, if you're the one rejecting these uh, deliverances of being 100% whole, uh, it's entirely on you uh, and your own way of thinking, how you just limit yourselves. And you're just like, oh, no, uh, uh, is this really going to happen? Is this really going to take place? And other things like that. I don't want God to be wrong. It's just things like that. As people in the body of Christ are ignorant of how they can act, how they actually are getting their prayers heard and it's through deliverance and intercession. People in the body of Christ are interceding for the body of Christ all day to ensure that they are delivered to get in on the action in this war as well as just to get delivered in general. But uh, this is just the main um, uh, the main work to actually be done because there is an all-out war. Christ himself was specifically clear. It was I actually uh, just clear, crystal clear in itself. Then when he was actually delivering individuals, he said it plain and simple. He said, um, the kingdom of heaven has come upon you. Uh, and uh, obviously that in itself means that the kingdom of heaven has conquered that ground uh, and that territory and it's been reclaimed for uh, for God himself. And because it's actually been reclaimed for God, um, it's the same principle as how you would be in heaven. So these things are just pretty easy to recognize and to see that obviously... Uh, you need to be taking your territory back, which is your life, uh, for the kingdom of heaven itself to be in the same exact manner in heaven, to have your heavenly image down here on earth. Because all these, uh, anything contrary to what your heavenly image is like is uh, territory that belongs to the devil. If you've already broken the grounds up, uh, but you haven't casted out the legions themselves to actually be delivered 100%, that's entirely on you. Uh, and you should really... Um, this is, there's no reason for these uh, beings to obviously stay inside of your life. Uh, there's absolutely no reason for these individuals to stay, or these demons themselves to obviously stay inside of your life. It's all heavily dependent on you and your own, um, your action and your, your inactive role on your end. So, But obviously the body of Christ is interceding for the body of Christ to ensure that they obviously do uh, get involved uh, in this war because this is all out war. Deliverance is a war. Getting rid of these spirits of witchcraft and other things like that is 100% a war. This all has to deal with war. So people who look at you crazy for engaging in spiritual warfare or pray for three hours or obey the law of Moses are lukewarm and, and there is no amount of grace on this earth to be able to hide that fact. As there is an all out war happening in this second heaven. And these individuals look at you all crazy, like, what? You just think that you don't have to worship? You, I have to do more than just go to church on Sunday and worship and do things like that? You're crazy. I don't even have to do that. But these individuals are lukewarm. And obviously, when they end up dying, they're going to be spit out and, and go in hell. If you, do, if you don't think these works are for you because you would much rather do things... Uh, then obviously to do these works and in all honesty, Christianity is too much for you. Let Christ define what Christianity is instead of your pastor to finally get out of your lukewarm lifestyle that you were justifying until you finally ended up dying. And then there you would have found out that you were actually being lukewarm. And this is just obviously going to have to take you seriously. Uh, letting Christ define what Christianity is to actually be delivered from that. So just give it to Christ and loose those graces in. Whether you want to fight or don't feel led to, the enemy doesn't see it like that as they are fighting you 24-7. So that in itself, you just got to be 
realistically so stupid just because they honestly do see it like that you don't see it like that you're like i don't feel like i'm led to actually fight when the the demons the witches the satanists the warlocks the high priests uh they're fighting you 24 7 the devil loves the fact that you do not fight back. So don't act dumb because you don't have the faith to actually fight because you think God will give you graces. Your life will get worse and worse and, be, and worse rebuked because you doubted God. So go big or go home. And you doubted God because you didn't think that God was actually going to win this fight for you. So that's why you didn't actually want to fight as well. If God can see that he can use you for a good work, the devil can as well to do an evil one. Think ahead and add graces to graces uh, and just start early. You're justifying yourself will be the reason why you will go into the lake of fire. And you have to be able to accept that you don't know everything. And because of that, you need more help than you think. And that's just realistically the main issue with many individuals on the face of this earth. They don't actually recognize that they don't know everything. And because they don't know everything, they need a lot more help than they think. And they're just uh, judging their own lifestyle by their own knowledge that they actually have received. And just based off of that alone, uh, obviously, they're not really addressing these situations in truth. Uh, and they're not really uh, delivering themselves as they should. They're only delivering themselves based off their own knowledge. And this is essentially why uh, these individuals are obviously going into torment and they're not actually getting fully delivered. So uh, these things are pretty easy to recognize and to see. But um, it, it's just such a simple concept that you don't know everything. So you should be reliant 100% on Jesus Christ. And for you to ever just start judging uh, your own life and, and judging righteously according to your own knowledge is just error in itself. You should just remain humble and stay humble and just uh, be clean the inside of your cup that the outside may look clean. Uh, but this one is just pretty easy and self explanatory This was just, I just added this. And how to discern a soul tie is when you get attached to anyone, boyfriend or girlfriend, whoever, a dog. Your dog and other things like that. Obviously, this is a soul tie. When individuals just begin to get attached, the boyfriend and girlfriend, uh, and it's not really love or anything like that, this is uh, what is called a soul tie. So, uh, obviously, individuals get boyfriends, individuals get girlfriends. They automatically get attached to this individual. Uh, this is a soul tie. This is strictly for, um, obviously, married couples and not really for boyfriend and girlfriends. Uh, for, I mean, for your pets, I guess, for loved ones, for old friends, or, or just like Jonathan and David, uh, and other things like that. This is realistically isn't really for boyfriend and girlfriend, just because obviously the devil can use this attachment. He could define it as love, and next thing you know, uh, you obviously go into fornication. You have a, uh, you have a child. Uh, and this child is obviously cursed for 10 generations from the congregation with the curse of the bastard. So uh, even if you get married afterwards, the, the because the kid was obviously um, made before you were married, obviously the, the child is cursed. Don't show your quota for yourselves. Your kid is 100% cursed with the curse of the bastard. And until you obviously break that curse and all the curses of rejection and all the curses of whatever, uh, your child is never going to be free. They're never going to be allowed in the congregation for 10 uh, generations. And obviously, you're not really going to be allowed in the body of Christ because of that curse itself. So uh, this is why it's important for you to break this curse of the bastard. Obviously, the devil himself doesn't want you breaking these curses. He wants more. Um, he wants more bastards. He wants more curses. He wants more legal grounds to be able to actually be uh, able to work inside of your life. So, um, uh, you have to go back as far as you actually have to go back. And that's just pretty easy and self explanatory for you to be able to recognize and, and to see. Just 10 generations ago, that's 400 years ago, some of you individuals were pilgrims, uh, and some of you individuals were, um, in Mexico, having the time of your life uh, swinging through vines and uh, living in jungles and fighting jaguars and and getting into it with cheetahs and other things like that. So obviously you weren't civilized for 400 years ago with Euroians, the 1600s, some of you individuals are really in. Oh wait, no, nah, that's... Uh, some of your individuals were still in jungles, but some of your individuals were barely getting into that civilized culture with the conquistadors and, and Spain and other things like that that happened in the 1300s. So 
and even then the slave trade in, in the 1800s and the 1700s and other things like that uh, just be honest with yourself do you honestly think that there's not one single if you go back through all these generations themselves there's two families and four families and eight families then 12 families and 18 families and eventually obviously there's just so many families there's got to be the curse of the bastard uh, going up uh, your family tree so just break these curses up uh, and break the grounds up to dismantle the kingdom of darkness, the Antichrist, and witchcraft completely. Send the angels that frustrate these devils, uh, and they will definitely try to stop you from engaging in spiritual warfare to destroy their church by convincing you in theology and other similar similar tactics that you don't actually have to fight. Uh, the easiest way to be able to tell that they are trying to stop you from fighting them and by telling them that you... And by them telling you that you don't actually have to fight, so fight is by them actually telling you that you don't have to fight. So although the kingdom of darkness is not playing with you, you can actually say the same back and be able to back it up to the point they can't stop you or move an inch forward since you actually have the manpower, the spirit and power that they can't and they aren't able to actually stop you. The bolder the proclamation and faith in God, the bigger the deliverance, especially after you've broken all grounds. And so these devils themselves and these witches and whatever who else is in the kingdom of darkness, they all say the same thing. Uh, and they all try to work in the same, uh, they try. To, they all try to operate in the same manner. Uh, every single one of them from the least to the greatest, they all, they all use the same, they can't function inside of your life without any grounds. If you buy products from Babylon and other things like that that are cursed, you buy cursed products and things like that, then obviously they're able to come inside of your life. But uh, they all fight uh, dirty. That's their own means uh, for them to actually be able to fight. They can only fight dirty uh, and they can only fight with legal grounds themselves and trying to convince you that they could actually fight you. But obviously you're not supposed to suffer them to live and especially if they're already doing witchcraft on you inside of your life. Uh, that already gives you the grounds to be able to kill them. You sh and it's already written that thou shalt not suffer a witch to live. And even worse, they just expose themselves 100% uh, as, um, uh, as actually being able to be killed uh, just by them actually uh, working inside of your life. Obviously, now you have the grounds to kill them, whether you acknowledge it, whether you know them personally, whether you've ever seen them in person or not, you obviously have the grounds to be able to kill them. So uh, you don't have to rely on your own knowledge. Obviously, Christ himself knows, and you just uh, you just send the legions out to obviously kill these individuals that do interact with them. That's Christ, so you can hurt the enemy more. Uh, intercede strategically and bind the agents the devil is using to direct his kingdom strategically. So obviously this is uh, the means to actually be able to dismantle the kingdom of darkness, uh, the Antichrist's kingdom, and witchcraft completely. A loose warring angels to beat them down to get the job done. As the entire host of heaven is fighting since you've broken the grounds, causing the judgment to be on the, that is on the face of this earth, uh, to be removed and God takes this judgment away and moves things in the heavenlies in your favor. If you feel that you can do more damage to the kingdom of darkness but aren't, it's obviously a curse. That's what's actually hindering you. Uh, you don't have to know how God will remove these judgments like Leviathan being enthroned since he can't say he has the grounds to be enthroned anymore or free will or cancer or witchcraft. More than likely it will be far beyond your comprehension comprehension so just know that you will uh you are a spiritual being and this is why these judgments happen and until you address these situations in truth you'll continue wandering the wilderness for 40 years uh stop whatever always works for the devil by breaking the grounds to remove the judgments to completely shut the devil up as obviously there's certain uh tactics that the devil is using right now that is obviously 100% successful he has a 100% success rate, and this is essentially what we're going to stop these curses uh, to ensure that, uh, obviously, you shut the devil up and he's not confident anymore, and you just ruin his confidences up. Ruin their confidences, cut the strings off to ensure the devil cannot puppeteer you in ignorance because he obviously is already. The devil will never stand and has never stood a chance when there were no legal grounds. Some of these fights do require more manpower and attention, though. So you cannot down a tank with a pistol, but an anti-tank weapon. Nudge the body of Christ and intercede strategically to ensure that everyone is on the same page according to Christ's uh, page and liking. 
investigate where the devil has pacified you and obviously fight uh, and get these enthroned evils and kings off. I'm just going to mention this before I actually go in any further about getting the enthroned evils and kings off. Pray before you begin reading the scriptures because some of you are not spiritually discerned enough uh, to notice a pressure on their heads while reading. Uh, this pressure is a demon attempting to twist the scriptures and to stop you from actually understanding this, what the scriptures are actually trying to say. So uh, break the curses and bind them loose. And this is how pastors influence your theology. When pastor passes error to you because it belongs to the kingdom of darkness, the demons know what are false doctrines. And so they begin working in the pastors who push these false doctrines as obviously they're being puppeteered in ignorance. So no, you can't go to any church because of worship or whatever else you may think because you may not be fighting the enemy but the enemy never stops fighting you whether you want to live in denial or not your pastor has stolen your spark of wanting to obey god and christ more and obeying the law of moses is, is about not giving the enemy a foothold by you giving them legal grounds to be in your life because you are in sin so obviously the the law of moses is holiness just because the law of moses tells you what sin is because it tells you what sin is obviously you're not falling into sin you're, you're avoiding these things themselves uh and other things like that so you're not giving the enemy a foothold either that's 613 demons and whatever branched off from these principles themselves that are contrary to actually being obedient to god If, if the opposite of obeying the law of Moses is sin, then obedience and holiness is, is, and sanctification is what the law of Moses is. Christ is swishing you in his mouth until you die, and then you will be spat out for not being hot. And I know you want to deliver yourself, but you're going to have to lose the graces to even be able to because you cannot take the glory for yourself instead of giving it to Christ ever. This is why abiding in Christ for everything is vital. It is a virtue. If every suffrage in your life could have been avoided, if you were prudent by default, you should always be thinking ahead and preparing yourselves for the situations that you're not obviously able to uh, think of and for the new situations that will arise and are going to arise. Uh, and the hidden ones, especially that for the new situations that you need to be preparing yourselves for, and even the ones that you don't know of, you never even thought of, or you never even thought it could happen uh, to you. And it has to be 100% Jesus and not 99% Jesus and 1% you. Uh, so break the curses that came with disobeying the law, from disobeying the law of Moses from Jerusalem outward, and bind and loose strategically. Obviously, in a strategic manner, this is obviously able to get the work done ASAP uh, and a hundred percent. So, uh, this strategy stuff—you're not relying on yourself. Do you honestly know how to do this strategically? No. So, obviously, you're praying through groans too deep for words, uh, as you're praying for the Holy Spirit to actually make intercession uh, for you to actually be able to bind these demons up and the ones directing these abominations strategically and to lose uh, legions strategically. And when you lose legions, obviously you lose the legions to replace the old demons that were in the area, as well as you're losing the legions to obviously be able to bind the demons up. And so obviously this is all a network, this is all an, uh, an operation, and this is all an order in itself that is way higher than the devil's comprehension. And that's a solid truth at that, and there's absolutely nothing that the devil can obviously do because of it. Uh, if you think that the devil is able to comprehend the tactics of the Holy Spirit, then I'm sad to say that you're... Uh, you're just flat out deceived. So you should apply that principle to actually getting these enthroned evils and kings off by binding and loosing strategically. Uh, by using just tactics and strategies that are far beyond the devil's comprehension and nudging the body of Christ and receiving strategically for the body of Christ to ensure that obviously um, this is all done in a strategic uh, manner. So... Uh, this was a lot, in all honesty, but who knows the Holy Spirit what else he wants to say. Uh, he says he wants you to obviously be able to get the devil off the, the face of the earth and already shut up for the thousand years to remove those judgments themselves. As now, obviously, I've been talking about this this entire video, how uh, these judgments are the main re these legal grounds themselves are the main reasons why these judgments are on the face of this earth. If there's no judgments, 
or if there's no grounds, there's not going to be any judgment. So obviously the devil has made grounds to ensure that he could prosper on the outside for as long as possible. And because of that, obviously he's using it to his own advantage. Uh, but we're just going to cut the head off the snake and ensure that he obviously is not able to do that any longer. As uh, He shouldn't be doing that to begin with just because of that, because he's evil, he's roaming around, he's networking. Uh, and doing other things like that, especially all under a premise that whatever this individual fell into sin, God didn't see it like that, uh, and you shouldn't either. He absolutely hates it, but he also knows that he can't. St these little grounds are final. It's it ultimately falls on you uh, for. Um, It ultimately falls on you for actually um, falling into sin. So, uh, and that's essentially it. And that's essentially that. But you break these grounds up. You cast these things out in the same manner how you actually deliver yourselves, uh, off, and you deliver the earth as if it was your body, uh, and you intercede and you bind and loose strategically to ensure that the devil has no place whatsoever inside of your life as well as for you to actually be able to think ahead for these new situations that will arise uh, and to obviously be leaning on Christ's knowledge for these new situations that are going to arise. Uh, as I was speaking already earlier, how uh, the devil himself is already working these uh, this work to be able to give you cancer by putting grounds inside of your life um, and terminal illnesses and other things like that. Uh, so obviously these things don't happen overnight, and this is exactly what is happening. This is what happened with many individuals who are walking the face of this earth. Uh, even individuals before they even started having kids, the devil was already working that work inside of their life to be able to curse their kids and to put grounds inside of their kids. So by the time they actually did have kids, uh, these individuals were already at 50%, and then they had kids, and it all got sped up a lot faster, and now the kid has cancer. So... So break these curses up that would even cause you to actually be able to give your children cancer and other things like that or some sickness or some uh, terminal illness or to be molested or and just whatever to go missing and other things like that because the devil is already doing it. He obviously doesn't care if you have given him the luxury to be able to come to him for inside of your life, to come inside of your room at whatever point that you obviously want or that obviously he wants and other things like that and this is entirely on you you didn't put your foot down enough and you just eh, whatever everything's gonna be fine and well, the devil is completely evil you give him an inch and it'll take a mile next thing you know you got cancer and how did this happen uh, you're not even whole anymore and obviously he's already doing that work itself to ensure that you obviously um, never um, get whole so just break those grounds up as well as every single ground and just rely on the Holy Spirit and rely on Christ uh, and dismantle the entire kingdom of darkness itself uh, and bind and loose strategically to destroy the satanic church and the satanic school itself and the satanic world. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. Now everything that I mentioned, I pray that you have the graces to actually be able to know for certain that Christ is the reason why you're going to be successful and to actually be able to do that work itself. Because if you don't actually have these graces, you're going to rely on yourself 100%, and then you're going to fall flat on your face, and you're going to wonder what happened. Why is this happening to me? And other things like that. And obviously it's because you relied on yourself and until you finally learned that lesson the hard way that you can't ever rely on yourself. Some of you may never learn, and some of you may never learn in general. So... Uh, bind and loose, uh, just loose the spirits to be able to cancel these things out inside of your vessel. Uh, these kings, uh, these good kings, these good princes, these good chief princes, loose them inside of your vessel. The Holy Spirit should automatically be your strong man, uh, and Jesus Christ should automatically be your strong man. But, and then obviously he has princes and other things like that to be able for you to actually be able to do the works that he has already created you to do, as well as just in general. If you're a greedy person when it comes to graces, or you're a covetous person when it comes to graces, you're obviously going to be hoarding these graces to be able to better yourselves more. Uh, this is one time you don't actually have to be modest, right? So, 
you should definitely just lose as many graces as you can to absolutely better yourself and to put as many virtues and, and just to be able to think ahead as individuals have already been taught by another individual they see walking on the face of this earth like wow this person has a really good head on his shoulders and other things like that but um Obviously, give it to Christ as well as he already knows what you need and what you need to apply it to and what you should apply it to. And, uh, yeah, that about wraps it up. Um, uh, thank you for watching this video. Uh, think ahead. Uh, remember what the devil is already doing. These situations don't actually happen overnight with terminal illnesses, with car accidents, or other things like that. These things do take time. Or with children going missing. So just because of that, you need to be thinking ahead. And you need to be cutting the, cutting these, um, these strings off to ensure that he's not able to puppeteer your life. To be able to give you cancer. To be able to have somebody else give you corona. And to have somebody else give you cancer. Uh itself and you need to interact strategic you need to uh, intercede strategically interact with your angels and interact with these demons themselves as they already have common knowledge that they obviously are inside of your life and that they are deceiving you making the word completely null and void and lose that grace up itself to actually be able to accept that it is truth uh, so thank you uh, for listening, I pray that the graces are loose inside your vessel for whatever else I may have forgot, and the peace itself, uh, to ensure that you obviously are uh, at peace uh, again, as this peace has left you a long time ago, and you're barely noticing it now, and so this is why you go into torment and other things like this, so I pray that, that those graces are loose inside your vessel for you to actually receive your peace back, uh, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. And to think ahead to be losing pieces or pieces that you obviously would have to need at some point in your life uh, ahead of time. Uh, be loose inside your vessel because it's all 100% a grace. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. And to remain humble and everything else and anything else. Thank you. Have a good day. Uh, as well as losing the grace for you to actually be able to be talking to the Holy Spirit and not to think that you're talking to the Holy Spirit and to Jesus Christ as a grace in itself. There's many counterfeits of Jesus. Well, whatever. Uh, don't be naive to think that you're not being deceived by a false Jesus or a false Holy Ghost. Break the grounds up. Uh, causing you to suffer a wish to live. If you break these grounds up and something leaves, obviously they put these grounds in there to stop you. And there was a sin on your end. So fear the Lord. Go big or go home. So don't act dumb just because you don't actually have the faith to believe that God is going to win all of your battles. This is why you aren't fighting back. You are going to get rebuked for that, even if you don't actually say that or have even 
or ignorant of the fact that that's what you're doing rather than see it like that you already confess totally if you are not able to understand or you're it was beyond your comprehension then obviously that's on you you've been cursed and that's a demon and it's also a of grace to combat it and just to get rid of it that way you actually are able to be sharp uh, and be able to recognize where you confess something this subtly and you don't actually realize it and recognize that's exactly what you're doing as some individuals are so um, what would be the word um, they're ignorant and naive about the things they obviously say that they obviously confess uh, that they are in sin in some way, shape, or form. But they then they go off living the same lifestyle. And then these judgments come and they're just like, well, I don't know what happened. And other things like that when Christ himself and God himself was obviously warning these individuals uh, day in and day out to repent. But these individuals just didn't see it like that. They were just like, no, it's just I didn't fall into sin. And finally they obviously... They hear these types of messages while they finally receive the graces to have their eyes open to be able to recognize that they were living in sin. And they're like, wow, yeah, I did say that at that time, but I was just whatever. And they come up with and just whatever. Think ahead. Um, pray for the things that Christ himself wants you to pray for uh, that is concerning your spiritual life and sanctification and what he wants for you. That way you're all, you're all caught up and you're all, um, then you're not playing catch up. In Jesus Christ's name, loose those graces up. Fight, bind them loose strategically. Tell the devil to keep it simple. And be bold. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Thank you for a good day.